Hey guys, I have two cats. One is named Yoko and the other one is named Johnny. And sometimes I have to leave them at home for more than one day. So that's why I've built this. This is an automatic feeder that could be adjusted for different portions and time intervals. And yes, I know that you could just buy such a device, but I thought it would be a lot more interesting to just build my own and make it homemade. So I've made the design and 3D print it. And then we control a servo motor here with an Arduino and the real-time clock to get the hour of the day. Also some voltage regulators, an OLED display here on the back and some push buttons. So yes, as you can see, it's a simple project, but I think it could be quite interesting. So if you want to build this same project, stick till the end of this video. So guys, let's get started. Your projects will be a lot better if you use the services from PCBWay for prototyping boards, for soldering your components with the SMD assembly service, or the steel SMD stencil for soldering the components yourself. Or maybe you want to try their flexible PCBs, or the new services with 10% discount for CNC machining or 3D printing, together with laser metal cutter and bending, and also mold injection parts. I've just received my PCBs from PCBWay and they look amazing, especially with this new purple color that I've tried, but you can select any other color from this list. They have a very fast production time, so you can have your boards in less than 10 days, and the best of all, starting from only $5. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is my dear cat Yoko. And this here is Johnny. And sometimes I have to leave them home alone. They can handle pretty good being alone, even for a few days. But I have to leave them a lot of food and water, or maybe to make sure that somebody will pass by my home and check the food level. You could also buy an automatic feeder to do that job, but I want to make my own to be homemade. So I've designed the body and 3D printed. And then we'll add a motor and timers, an Arduino and some buttons to control the food amount by selecting the time and portions. Like that I make sure they will always have food. So let's see what we need for this simple project. Obviously, you will need my design for the 3D printed parts, so download them from below. We have the feeder support base. Then we have the main feeder body that will go inside of this support. We have the hopper and that will go inside this main body part, and this is where the motor will go. This also has a case behind, where we can place the electronics, such as the Arduino, the real-time clock, maybe a buzzer and some buttons. And then we have two more small parts, the top cap and the cover of the electronics case. And finally we have this part which is the inside feeder divider. And this part will rotate inside and control the amount of food that will get out. Everything was printed with PLA material and without supports. I've used two parameters, 20% infill, a 0.25mm layer height and 0.4mm nozzle. And that's it for the 3D printed parts. Together with these parts, we need to use a servo motor like this one, the MG995. We will have to hack it for full rotation, and we will see how to make that in a moment. We also need two bearings like this ones. The details about each part are below in the description on electroloops.com. We will also need an M3 threaded rod and M3 nuts. At the same time, we also need to use some M3 insertion nuts like these ones. And to control the servo, I will use an Arduino Nano, and to get the real-time, I will use a real-time clock module like this one here, that is based on the DS3232IC. We need external RTC, because counting the time with the Arduino is not that precise, and also if the Arduino resets, the counter would be lost, so it's better to use this module. And to supply everything, I want to use a 12V DC adapter like this one. And to get 5V, I will use a buck converter. The Arduino already has a 5V regulator, but it's very low power, so it can supply the servo, and that's why we need an external buck converter module like this one. We will also need some glue, wires, maybe a prototyping PCB and some tools. This is pretty much all that we need, and the full part list is below. 
So let's start. Get the 3D printed parts and remove all the loose filaments. And maybe sandpaper them a little bit if needed. Now get the feeder rotating part. Get some M3 insertion nuts. And using the soldering iron, insert one on each end. Now get the main part of the body, and this is where the servo will go. So we also need to add 4 insertion nuts in the same way, using the soldering iron. And we do the same for the bottom part for the electronics case. We add 4 insertion nuts so we can close the case with screws. We will add the bearings on these holes later, once we have the servo motor in place. So now let's hack the servo motor. Servo motors usually can rotate 180 degrees. I want to make this to rotate without stopping. If we open any servo motor, we will find some kind of feedback, which usually is just a simple potentiometer. So to simulate that the motor is always in the middle position, we need to replace this potentiometer with a fixed value resistor. So I want to solder two resistors in a voltage divider configuration. And they must have the same value, so we have a middle value in between. So I solder them like this to the control PCB. So now the DC motor should spin without stopping when we apply a PWM signal to it. But there is one more thing to do. If you open the gearbox, you will see that one of the gear has one pin. And this is used to restrain the rotation to only 180 degrees. So remove that pin so it could rotate freely 360 degrees. And that's it. We can now close back the motor. And here I have it connected to the Arduino and the potentiometer. So as you can see I can still control the rotation direction, but the servo will now rotate without stopping. Ok so now get the M3 threaded rod and cut it to around 20cm. If needed we can cut it shorter later. We can screw this on the servo motor. To fix it in place I will also add some M3 nuts and tie them to the motor. You could even apply some glue if you want. Now we add another nut and a bearing. And insert this entire setup inside of the plastic part and measure where that nut should be so the bearing will fit exactly on this hole that we have inside of the part. And when you find the perfect position, I add two more nuts and tie them to the bearing. Now that the bearing is in place, all is left to do is to add the feeder separator in between. So place that feeder inside till you can see the insertion nuts to the hole. So now we add the threaded rod and rotate it till the screw will get on the other side. And on this other side, we add another nut and tie it to the feeder inside, so it won't get loose. You could also add some glue if needed. Then on the outside we can add the second bearing. We could add two more nuts and tighten them, so the screw can get out. And on the other side we can also screw in place the servo motor using M3 nuts and the insertions that we have added before. Now the feeder mechanism is ready and as you can see we can now rotate the feeder. But after some tests I realized that we also need this part in place. And we use this part so not all the food would get on top of the rotating feeder because that would block it in place. Like this we can control the flow of food so also get this part and 3D print it. Ok now it's time for the electronics. This is the schematic that I want to use. The Arduino is connected to the servo and the real time clock module. And everything is supplied with 5 volts from the back converter. I also want to add 3 push buttons so we can change the time interval and the amount of food to dispense. So following this schematic I connect everything to a prototyping PCB and I add the Arduino Nano, the buzzer and the RTC module. I get the back converter and I solder the 5V connection on the back. Then I add it to the PCB to supply the digital parts. On one side of the electronics case I made a hole. And I will add a jack connector like this one for the supply. I also make another hole on top and I pass the servo wire through this hole. 
I make the connections and fix the PCB inside of the case. On the cover part of the case, I add 3 push buttons like this one here. And I solder wires to each for ground and signal. And then I connect them to the Arduino. So now I could close the case, but first we need to upload the code. The code is very simple. Using the DS3232 library, we get the real time. And we store this time and the feeding time on the EEPROM memory, so even if I unplug the feeder, we will still have the schedule saved onto the memory. Using the push button, we can select the portions of food to serve, between 1 and 10, 15, 20 and back to 1. And using another push button, we can select the time interval in hours, from 1 to 24. And using the third button, we can make a manual serving. And when we get to that time, we spin the motor for so long according to the portions, and that's it. We also send some notifications with the buzzer using analog write. I finally decided to add a display as well, so it would be easier to see the portions and the time. So I connect this to the ice crazy pins on A4 and A5 and glue it in place on the plastic case. I would change the design of the case so it would already have the space for such an OLED display. But like this we can now see the portions and the time, and not rely on the buzzer notifications only. So download the code from below and upload it to the Arduino Nano. Then we can close the case with entry screws. I will add this 12V DC adapter for supply. And the entire system will start. The first serving must be manual, so we press the middle button. Pressing the first button we can change the portions. And pressing the third button we can change the time interval. And when we get to that time, dinner is served, and the server will start rotating. So let's see if I can feed some cat food. Ok, so for the hopper, I've made this hole here, so we can see the food level. And inside we have to glue in place a transparent plastic film. So I cut to size a plastic sheet and glue it in place. Like this we can see inside of the plastic hopper. And then we can glue this entire hopper on top of the rest of the body. It's also recommended to add a silica bag like this one, on top of this top plate. So like this we can absorb the moisture and keep the food dry. And that is quite important. So now I can fill the hopper with dry food. Then we can use this top cap and close the hopper. I add a bowl below the feeder. And I set the time to only 20 seconds in the code just for this test, and now I wait. And yes, in 20 seconds, there is food coming out for 5 portions. Let's now set it to 10 portions and see that double the amount will get out. I know how much my cats are eating, so I will leave it to 5 portions and 8 hours. So the project works and now my cats will always have food. I will leave this device running while I'm home as well, for a few months, so I'll make sure it doesn't fail. Maybe a future improvement is to make it based on batteries. Because some of the commercial feeders are wireless and using batteries, so maybe that will be interesting. You don't want wires hanging around in your kitchen, or wherever you have your cat food. Another improvement would be maybe to add some suction ventos like this one below the support, so the feeder will get stuck to the floor, in case that the cats want to throw it down. But that's it guys, this was a simple project, but maybe some of you will find this useful. I think it looks pretty good, and if you want you can also paint it, or print it with different colors. You can also change the 3D design and make the hopper bigger, for more food if you want. So feel free to make any change. So guys, if you want to make the same or maybe improve this project, you have all my designs and the schematic below on electronics.com. If you like this video or maybe you have learned something new, consider subscribing or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, so that was the video for this week, I hope that you like it. And as always, the most important part for me is that you have learned something new. 
and I would like to thank you to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon because that for me is huge. And by the way, if you would like to support my projects, you have all my links below for this Patreon page, for my social media, for my shop, and so on. So thanks again, and see you later, guys.